Moment of hope now. This from NBC News' Pete Williams, our justice correspondent. The Senate continues to work. The Senate will stay until its work is done to move the process forward such that Joe Biden can be inaugurated as the next president of the United States. Pete Williams reports that the Senate is in a secure location, plans to work and be in session in that secure location and continue the count, which in years past, in cycles past for hundreds of years since the formation of this union, it's a process that has happened largely without incident, largely as a procedural moment. Today, of course, there were, well, there was one at least objection that happened by Arizona during the roll call and then a series of performances by, by leaders uh, in a break and then the siege on the Capitol. So you wonder, and I don't know, we'll report as we have the information, you wonder if other states will still object on, given the current circumstances. Congressman Brendan Boyle is with us, Democrat of Pennsylvania, inside as it happened. Congressman, your thoughts? Yeah, well, thank you. It's, it's good to be with you to wish the circumstances were different. Um, I, right now, I'm with, with a, uh, a group of colleagues that have been moved to a location I can't say um, by U.S. Capitol Police. Um, I, I was happy just as you were turning it to me. I, I heard your news reported that the Senate will stay in session. Uh, that is a very encouraging um, piece of news. As a House member, I strongly encourage House leaders to do exactly the same thing. Um, there is no way, and this is much bigger than the individuals, Joe Biden and Donald Trump. It is way bigger than that. This is about democracy and our Constitution versus anarchy. We need to stay in session. We need to fulfill our constitutional duty and finish this process and ensure the 306 electoral votes for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are certified, because that is our constitutional system. The question is process, Congressman. We are in a place where there are, and I've said it before, but it is the crux of the, the root of the problem. Tens of millions of people believe that when the president falsely claims that the election was stolen, that the ballots were fraudulent, yeah. that the count was rigged, they believe it. And if I believed yeah. that, that our nation were being overtaken, I, too, would march in the streets. I wouldn't stand for the United States, the entire system, to be corrupted, as the president claims it was, and millions of his followers believe. What do we do about that? You have to fix that. Disinformation, is, this is one of the big existential questions of our time. Because we do, unlike just 40, 50 years ago, when most people were getting their information from common sources, we are now in a siloed environment when, in which the people who just stormed the Capitol and still are right now are getting their information from sources I probably never even heard of. Uh, and it does concern me. It also shows you why, while thousands of people armed storming the Capitol are clearly a threat, frankly, the greater threat long term are those who incite this are those who literally profit from feeding them this steady diet of disinformation and lies. The question of how we solve this, I don't pretend to have all the answers. I just know we need to if we are going to finally um, move forward in a united direction that preserves our democracy. Because in the end, and I never imagined I would say this um, about the United States of America, but uh, if we had talked a few years ago, I would have said, without question, we will stay a democracy forever. Uh, it would be foolish to even question that. Now, I still think that, but I'm at maybe 95 percent, 96 percent. And it, 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 I now understand the wisdom in what John Adams said, that democracies don't die from external threats. They die by suicide. What we're seeing today is a suicidal act to a democracy. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.